model predictive control uses a mathematical model to optimize and control a system. Let's say, for example, we have a vehicle that we want to have uh, go from zero up to a speed of 40 uh, meters per second. And we're going to adjust the gas pedal, okay? Or the, uh, this would be the power to the accelerator. And we would normally do that as we're entering onto a freeway. Uh, we normally increase, okay, increase the gas pedal or the accelerator pedal. And then after we get up to speed, we back off and uh, just enough to maintain that speed. So we have an acceleration phase and then our steady state phase. We want an optimizer to do that for us. Instead of us doing it, we'll have an optimizer adjust each of those manipulated variable moves all along the way until it comes up with an optimal profile that helps us keep along a desired trajectory. So this is called a reference trajectory and it describes how we want the controlled variable to behave. So that's our output is the controlled variable and we're telling it the objective. Now we're going to use a couple things here. We're going to use a mathematical model of this system and then also you know, known limitations on our manipulated variable or other constraints that we want to impose. And then we'll solve an optimization problem. We'll wait a period of time and then solve it again. So let's set that up in Gecko. We're going to solve uh, this optimization problem with, uh, and, you know, just set it up and solve it with Gecko. And um, I'll just go ahead and move this one out of the way. Okay, and bring up our Gecko page. So in order to do this, uh, you know, this is number 17 on a long list of example problems. We're just doing this one, uh, number 17, and we'll do some debugging as well. Okay, so the very first thing you'll need to do is just import Gecko. Go ahead and pip install Gecko if you don't have it. And then you'll import NumPy. We'll also do um, random and matplotlib as pyplot. And then don't forget the percent matplotlib inline. And then we'll have m equals Gecko. And then we'll set up our time horizon. So our time horizon is how far and how frequently we're going to look forward into the future with our mathematical model and for, for the optimizer to plan a prediction horizon. Then we have some parameters. We have mass. Uh, we have B. Okay, just go ahead and copy these. Here's our gain K. Um, and then we're going to move on down to the manipulated variable definition. This is going to be our gas pedal or accelerator pedal. Um, we're just going to call P. And we can go between 0 and 100. So we have a lower bound of 0 and an upper bound of 100. And then we're going to turn it status on. So status allows the optimizer to change that value. If you have it as an FV, then it just has one value over the whole horizon. But if you have an MV, then it's able to change that at every time point in the horizon. OK, a D cost. Uh, this is a delta cost. And I'll go ahead and describe this in the objective here. Okay, we have our delta cost right here. And so we're penalizing the manipulated variable movement. So if you have a small cost there, you can often smooth out the manipulated variable a little bit more. If you have zero, then all it's concerned about is meeting that trajectory. So that t value, that y of t is right here and right here. And then we put a certain weighting on that. So this is in the squared air from that reference trajectory. OK, we also have a couple other tuning parameters that we can deal with. Dmax, that deals with how much we can move the manipulated variable each cycle. So you saw 0 0.5 second cycles here. OK, and so it can move it a total of, uh, in this case, 20. OK, so 20%. And then the next cycle can go up to 40 at the most. OK, and then we have our controlled variable as well. I'm just going to find the velocity. And we have its status equal to 1. The initial value is equal to 0. And then I have CV type is 2. That's our squared error. 
So you could either have a squared error as shown here on the right, or you could have something like an L1 norm, uh, you know, for a reference trajectory with a dead band. Okay, so here's our squared error right here. And then if you wanted to implement the L1 norm, we would just be these two terms right here that are defined by these inequalities. And uh, they're just the error as you uh, get outside of the trajectory dead band. Okay, so an L1 norm might be something like this, where you say go within that region, and then it would try to maintain uh, this CV value within that region. Okay, but we're just going to use a standard squared error formulation. And you could also say, let's say I just wanted to say my trajectory is equal to 40, and you could tell it to try to get there as fast as you could. Okay, so a lot of different options for reference trajectories. Okay, but in this case, we're just going to use a squared error, which is CV type 2. There's our set point, which is equal to 40. And our trajectory initialization, this is equal to 1. That means start from where you are right here and go up with a certain time constant to the new value. The time constant in this case is going to be 5, so it's going to get about 63% of the way there at uh, 5 uh, seconds. Okay, that's our time constant for the reference trajectory. Okay, now we have our process model. There's just a simple differential equation. It can be any differential and algebraic equations, uh, nonlinear or linear equations. There's I mode 6, that's for control. And then we'll solve the problems. Now we've set up and solved this optimization problem. The next part is just going to be plotting and retrieving some values. Let's say you want to get the reference trajectory. That isn't reported with the standard solution. I'm just going to import JSON. And then I'll open the results.json file. And then we'll get that with the results. Okay, so it just assigns it to the variable uh, results. And then we'll plot our figure. Um, this one's going to be just the first subplot that you see there. Okay, and that's going to be MV optimized. We'll put on the legend. And we'll give it a Y label as well. So you can see that. Um, there at the bottom. We also have subplot 2, which we're going to use the, the JSON uh, file that we just imported. The results, we're going to get the trajectory value from that. And we'll plot that as a black line. And then we'll also get the CV response, which is going to be a red dashed line. And then we'll give it a Y label, an X label, and our legend. And then we'll also save the figure uh, export as a PNG transparent background with dots per inch equals to 600. So high resolution version that you can import somewhere. Okay, and so I did that and you can see the one that I imported here on the right, um, which is the result of that figure that's exported. Okay, so there is our moving horizon estimation solution. Let me go ahead and just run this. And uh, one of the important things with moving horizon estimation, it has to be fast enough in order to be able to solve real time. So if I um, say display equals true on the solver output, okay, so I'm solving it on the remote server right now. You'd want to go down and just watch to see how fast it's able to compute this solution. Okay, so there you can see 14 iterations and it found the solution in under 0.1 seconds, so 0 0.06 seconds. Okay, if you want to, if you notice the clock time was just a little bit slower, if you want to solve locally without an internet connection, just come here and say remote equals false. And that's available for Windows right now. It'll hopefully be available soon for Mac and Linux as well. Okay, so if you run it again, then you can see the clock time is much faster. You can speed that up again by taking out some of the um, you know, the plotting and other things there. Okay, so just a little bit slower on my local computer, but still very fast. You eliminated some of the internet overhead time. Okay, so that is the demonstration of moving our, of, uh, this is model predictive control. I'll just show you, for example, TR init, if I set that equal to zero, that's just going to be uh, a pure 
Uh, set point, no reference trajectory. Let me go ahead and turn off the display there so we don't get the solver output. Okay, and that's going to have a pure uh, reference trajectory that's going to uh, just go up to uh, 40. Okay, and then you can set other options as well. We had, uh, so for example, if you wanted to go faster, I'll set this back to trajectory initialization of one. Um, you could say I want to go faster up to that set point. So you can see it's right here. It's limited by the, you know, the, just the dynamics of the system. So it can't meet that reference trajectory. But you can see that the manipulative variable is saturated. So that is f as fast as it can go. Okay, so manipulative variable is already at 100. Okay, so that was a tutorial on model predictive control. You can set this up to solve it in a loop. You know, every certain cycle time, you'd get new measurements for your controlled variables. And then based on that, you would replan your manipulated variable path. You would implement just the very first manipulated variable. Okay, so that would be this one that steps up. You would wait the 0 .0, uh, 0.5 seconds. You take a new measurement and then you would re-optimize implementing that next one and continue on like that just implementing just the first one in that cycle and uh, you would have a model predictive controller that would be able to control a real process okay our next example problem is going to be number 18 where we're going to do some debugging of gecko applications uh, show you how to take take a deeper look into the application Look at some of the underlying files and how Gecko magic works.